In this video, we're going to begin exploring how these characteristics of proton NMR spectra give us information about the functional groups and connectivity of the functional groups in organic compounds. And we're going to start with the number of signals. Actually, the number of distinct signals, this particular compound has three, does give us some insight into the different numbers of sets of distinct protons within the structure. Symmetrically disposed protons, as we'll see on the next slide, are going to give the same NMR signal, be part of the same NMR signal. The idea here is that any protons or any hydrogens that are chemically equivalent in equivalent electronic environments within the molecule are going to appear at the same frequency in the NMR spectrum. They're what we will call chemically equivalent. And chemically equivalent protons are related by one of two symmetry operations. The first is highly intuitive. Chemically equivalent protons can be exchanged by rotation about an axis of symmetry. So say the molecule's got an axis of symmetry, meaning if we took the structure, we rotated around that axis, and say we closed our eyes while we did the rotation and then opened our eyes, the resulting appearance of the molecule would be identical to where we started. So here, for example, in propane, we have a vertical axis of symmetry. And if we spin the molecule around this axis 180 degrees, the structure we get appears identical to where we started. But notice that the two protons at this central carbon are exchanged by this operation. If I highlight this one red in the back, red, and in the front, blue, after the rotation, the blue hydrogen is in the back and the red hydrogen in the front. But of course, the molecule has no notion of these labels, right? These are artificially human-imposed labels. And so those two hydrogens are in equivalent chemical environments. They're symmetrically disposed, related by rotation. To give you a few more examples of protons that are like this, take a look at these molecules. There's an axis of symmetry in this alkene right about here, and rotation around that axis is going to exchange those two hydrogens. This compound, methylene difluoride, we might call it, has a vertical axis of symmetry like this, and rotation around that axis is going to exchange the two hydrogens highlighted in red here. And cyclopropane also has an axis of symmetry, one of which is here, rotational axis of symmetry. Rotation around that is going to exchange those two hydrogens. Hydrogens that are related like this via rotation about an axis of symmetry are called homotopic. They're called homotopic because they are pretty much the same in every way. They are chemically equivalent, and as chemically equivalent protons, they're going to appear at the same frequency in an NMR spectrum. Now, protons that can be exchanged via reflection through a plane of symmetry are also chemically equivalent. These are known as enantiotopic protons. They're called enantiotopic because they're in mirror image chemical environments where the distances are the same, but right and left are different, if you like. And an example of this is shown for you here with ethanol. So ethanol has a plane of symmetry that is the plane of the screen as it's drawn right here. If we close our eyes, reflect through this blue plane of symmetry, and then open our eyes, the resulting structure will appear identical to the original structure. But again, if we label the hydrogens, this one in the front blue, let's say, and the one in the back red, this operation exchanges those two hydrogens. And so we can say they're in mirror image chemical environments, right? If you imagine standing on the red hydrogen, the OH group would be sort of to your left, right, if you're looking out of the screen. But if you stand on the blue hydrogen and look kind of into the screen, the OH group is on your right. So these protons are in mirror image chemical environments. That's why we refer to them as enantiotopic. Two other examples of enantiotopic protons are shown in the bottom right here. And what I'm going to do is highlight the atoms or groups in the plane of symmetry in each of these molecules. So this molecule has a plane of symmetry that includes the fluorine, the central carbon, and the chlorine. And reflection through that plane will exchange these two hydrogens in red. These are enantiotopic hydrogens. In this other molecule, we have a plane of symmetry that is the plane of the screen. So it actually includes all of these atoms and the carbon of the CH3 group. Reflection through that plane is going to exchange these two hydrogens. They are enantiotopic. And one thing to note is that neither of these molecules has a rotational axis of symmetry that exchanges 
these hydrogens. And so both of these pairs of hydrogens are enantiotopic. They're mirror image environments. These mirror image environments are electronically equivalent from the perspective of NMR, right? And so they're going to, um, these hydrogens are going to appear at the same frequency. There's a third relationship that protons with the same connectivity can have if they're not related by symmetry. Protons with the same connectivity connected to the same type of atom, same type of carbon, for example, but unrelated by symmetry are called diastereotopic, and they are not chemically equivalent, and this is very important. Diastereotopic protons will give different signals, will appear at different frequencies, different places along the x-axis in a proton NMR spectrum. And one thing that gets tricky with diastereotopic protons is they frequently have very similar NMR frequencies, so their signals are close, but they are definitely distinct. This slide shows you a, a kind of strategy or an algorithm for determining the spatial relationship between two hydrogens in a compound of interest. It's called the replacement test. And the basic idea here is we're going to replace one of the hydrogens with deuterium to generate one candidate molecule, and then we're going to replace the other hydrogen with deuterium to generate the other candidate molecule, and we're going to look at the isomeric relationship between these two compounds. In this particular case, we get the same compound. Although these appear different, all I have to do is flip over one of these, and we can see that they are, in fact, the same compound. This indicates that the two hydrogens in the original compound are homotopic. They're also related by a rotational axis of symmetry, and this is worth pausing and verifying on your own so that you can see it. See if you can find the rotational axis of symmetry in this compound. In the second case, if we do the same idea, we take this hydrogen, we replace it with deuterium to generate this molecule, and then we take this hydrogen and replace it with deuterium to generate this molecule, we find that the two resulting molecules are enantiomers. Each one is individually chiral, and they are mirror images of each other. And from this, we can infer that the two hydrogens originally, in the original compound of interest, are enantiotopic, because via the replacement test, we end up with enantiomers. Finally here, we've got a case of diastereotopic protons. And it's drawn as a Fisher projection, but we can apply the Fisher projection convention to reason our way through this. Replacing this hydrogen with deuterium generates this compound. Replacing this hydrogen with deuterium generates this compound. And notice what's happened here is we've generated two compounds with different configuration at this bottom stereocenter. We've got the D and H in different places, right? So those configurations are different. But if we consider the other stereocenter, well, this has the same configuration in both molecules. So these two molecules that differ in configuration at some but not all of their tetrahedral stereocenters are then necessarily diastereomers. And what we can say about the hydrogens of interest in the original compound is that these two hydrogens are diastereotopic. And keep in mind here, we would expect these then to show up at different frequencies different positions along the x-axis, different signals in a proton NMR spectrum. This slide summarizes our discussion so far of chemical equivalence and how to determine whether two protons, two or more protons for that matter, will give a single signal or distinct signals in a proton NMR spectrum. First, we ask the question whether the molecule has an axis of rotational symmetry and the hydrogens of interest are exchanged by that axis. If the answer is yes, the two protons are homotopic and are chemically equivalent and will appear at the same frequency or give the same signal, same signal in a proton NMR spectrum. If the molecule does not have an axis of rotational symmetry or that axis does not exchange the hydrogens of interest, we then ask, does the molecule have a plane of symmetry and does this plane exchange the positions of the two hydrogens of interest. If yes, the two hydrogens are then enantiotopic, and we can infer that they'll appear in the same signal, inside the same signal. If a plane of symmetry does not exchange those two hydrogens, they're not chemically equivalent. They might be diastereotopic. They, they might be entirely different constitutionally, right? Connected to completely different things, in which case we would expect the two hydrogens, two or more hydrogens, to appear in different signals. 
And so using this logic, what we can do is look at a molecular structure and infer the number of distinct signals we'd expect in the NMR spectrum. This slide touches on some useful heuristics for determining chemical equivalence. You can actually kind of go down a rabbit hole with methyl groups because with those three CH bonds, there's a lot to think about with rotation you know, of the, the H's around the carbon. The good news though for proton NMR is that the three protons of a methyl group are always chemically equivalent to each other. So the three H's in a CH3 group are chemically equivalent to each other. Now different methyl groups connected to different things will show up at different signals, right, in different signals. So that's something you want to watch out for. But within a given methyl group, we can treat those three hydrogens as chemically equivalent, all part of the same signal. When it comes to methylenes, which are CH2s with two different things, or a two, two other groups, I should say, connected to the carbon, two non uh, hydrogens connected to the carbon, the hydrogens within a CH2 are chemically equivalent unless the molecule contains a stereocenter. In that case, one of the H's will be closer to one of the unique groups at the stereocenter than the other, and then we have most likely a diastereotopic situation unless an element of symmetry exchanges those NH2s. And so then at that point, you'd really want to go back to the replacement test and think very carefully about whether those H's are diastereotopic or enantiotopic or, or what have you. So for example, in this first case, we have a CH2 with no other stereocenters in the molecule. These two protons are actually homotopic because this molecule has a rotational axis of symmetry this way. And so these two protons are chemically equivalent and would give one uh, NMR signal for the two of them. These two protons are not chemically equivalent. And the thing to notice about this is that there's a hydroxyl group here kind of underneath the screen, right, or, or pointed down uh, from our point of view. And one of those hydrogens is relatively close to that OH group, highlighted in blue. One of those protons is relatively far away, and so these are in distinct electronic environments. These are diastereotopic protons, and as such, they will give different chemical shifts. And this can cause um, alkyl groups to give rather messy looking signals, this diastereotopic CH2s issue. I encourage you to pause the video as well and work through the replacement test for this molecule, verifying that when we replace this hydrogen, generate one molecule, replace this hydrogen, generate another molecule, the two molecules we generate in that way are diastereomers of each other, indicating that the protons are diastereotopic. Now when it comes to sets of methylenes, you want to look for elements of symmetry, and this is important in NMR in general, looking for these elements of rotational and reflection symmetry. Two sets of methylene protons are chemically equivalent if they can be interchanged via an element of symmetry, be it a rotation or a reflection. So for example, in this molecule, we actually have a plane of symmetry that runs right through the carbonyl group. That plane of symmetry would move this carbon over here and vice versa. Reflection through that plane would exchange the two CH2 groups. So they are chemically equivalent, related by this reflection. They're also related by a rotation, rotational axis that's sort of along the same direction. If you imagine rotating around this way, that's also going to exchange the CH2 groups. And that's just added evidence that these two CH2s are chemically equivalent. And it's a good general lesson that we want to look for elements of symmetry, both these rotational axes of symmetry, that's going to point to homotopic hydrogens, and these reflection elements of symmetry, planes of symmetry, which will point us to enantiotopic hydrogens.